Well, surprisingly, I actually made it here. Hello, Facebook. I don't know what was up. My shop Wi-Fi network crashed, and then the house Wi-Fi network crashed, and then I tried to go on data, and that wasn't working, and then the Facebook Pages app was freezing, and it was just like one thing after another, but I'm here. So, tonight I'm talking about learning lean, a little bit about how I've implemented some lean in my shop, uh, what it's done for me, what it's doing for me currently, why I think holster makers should think seriously about implementing it in their shop, uh, and I've got a giveaway. So, hello Jim Ryan. It's been a few weeks since I've done any Facebook Live. Hi Maureen. Hey John. Hello Todd. Um, and so I'm trying to, get, trying to get back into the routine over the next few weeks of doing more of these. I have been scrambling to get through a whole bunch of work. Hello Gary. Yes, if you're a holster company, please post your company name in the comments. Dude, Jay Pearson is watching my live feed. Hello Jay. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick overview of lean, um, and how I'm thinking about it. This is by no means an exhaustive or comprehensive treatment of lean. There is a lot of work out there. There are books, there's tons of YouTube content, there are websites, there's tons of stuff out there about lean and lean implementation. I'm only going to be talking about some specific things that I've done in my shop and the ways that I think about it on a day-to-day -day basis in my shop that I find helpful. So. First thing, for me, uh, most of what I've learned about lean has come from three places. I read most of a book called Lean for Dummies, which had some good things in it and then a lot of stuff that wasn't applicable to me. And then uh, I've watched a fair bit of stuff on YouTube, some from Paul Akers and some from other people. And then I've been paying attention to guys like John Saunders and Jay Pearson, as well as trying to notice lean any place I can see it among the machinists that I follow on Instagram. And so a few things that I think about for lean in my shop, and they're really simple and straightforward. Hello, Valor Defense. Buffering. It's not buffering at my end. Um, basically, for me in the shop, lean involves noticing small improvements that can be made and making them. Lean is a process of continual, gradual improvement of the workflow, of the products, of everything about the business and any small improvement matters because we're looking at a over the course of a week over the course of a month that adds up hey Dan Taylor I'm sorry doing the best I can to stay connected I realize people are hopping off yeah John I know so I look around my shop trying to find small things that I can improve it can be as simple as marking a palette so I know its orientation every time I use it. It can be sorting through my Sharpies and get rid of, get, getting rid of all the dead ones and keeping only the colors I really need by the machine where I really need them. It can be building a new tape rack so that all the tape that I regularly use is all organized and I can see what's low and I can easily move the whole tape rack around the shop in one piece. Hello, Will Silk. And so for me, um, Noticing small problems and finding immediate solutions to them is the largest way that I think about lean. Uh, I've also been thinking about the workflow in my shop and trying to minimize handling because uh, handling and transportation. Uh, lean also talks about waste a lot. And recognizing where and how waste is happening in your shop is the first step in actually implementing a lean solution. So you have to see the problem, realize what's going on, before you can do something about it. And so uh, I grabbed a quick list off the web. I printed off some copies of it for our shop so that Eric and I can stay on the same page. Hello, Formidable Force. Um, so here are just eight kinds of waste that Six Sigma Lean talks about. And there are different, different strains of lean out there, lots of different variations. Um, defects, mistakes, things you did incorrectly or because of incorrect information, product that has to be scrapped or redone. Overproduction, making more than you need, having to sit on inventory for an unknown amount of time. Um, waiting, time wasted waiting for the next step in a process. This is downtime where the different steps kind of like traffic, they kind of accordion up and stuff doesn't flow smoothly through the process. One of the goals of good lean workflow is a continuous uninterrupted product flow throughout the space, throughout the entire process. 
So if you find that there are bottlenecks where stuff comes to a grinding halt and waits there and then starts again, those are probably some key areas to focus your problem solving to get a more lean workflow going. Another one is transportation, unnecessarily moving things around. This could be as simple as having tools placed in improper locations in your shop so you end up carrying parts around the shop too much instead of having bins move from station to station to station to station in a linear way till they reach completion and go to shipping. Um, inventory is its own type of waste. Now this might seem odd because I have recently shipped recently switched to actually holding inventory for the first time in the history of my company and I'm holding a small amount of inventory it would be one thing if I thought well I need Glock 19 holsters and I went out and made a thousand of them hi Kyle hello Alex Alex Wick I have no idea chocolate brown is not a popular color in my opinion but I don't know it might be the quality is poor it might be the price is wrong it might be people aren't finding you because your listing isn't written well I have no idea why people are not buying your chocolate brown mag carriers. That's for you to figure out. Um, but overproduction and sitting on tons of inventory is waste. It ties up space. It ties up time maintaining the inventory, cleaning the inventory, tracking the inventory. It ties up capital in the materials. It ties up labor that was invested to make the inventory that we don't get paid back on for a while. Uh, motion. Unnecessary movement. This is as simple as like, having a tool that's just out of reach so every time you need it, you take two steps get the tool use it and then take two and put it back and the next time you need it, take two and get it and then take two to put it back and so I've started looking around and buying multiples of certain tools I use regularly and trying to keep them where I use them so I bought some extra tape measures I have one at the mill I have one at the bandsaw I have one at the drill press inventory okay excess inventory equals bad that's a good distinction Jay thank you I'm, what I'm not saying is that inventory is bad. I'm really glad to be holding some inventory because it allows me to fulfill almost all my web orders in 24 hours or less. Pretty much the day or the, the day of or the next day after an order comes in, it ships. So if you order something at 10 o'clock at night, it'll usually go out first thing in the morning. If you order at noon, it might even still make it out same day, depending on when my postal carrier comes. And so that inventory has freed me up to have better workflow other places because I'm not being interrupted for any significant period of time to take care of that order if it comes in for something that's in inventory. What I wouldn't want to do would be build 200 Swift presses and be sitting on all of those for a long time. Hello, Rick. Rick's gunsmithing. Thank you for stopping in. And so um, when I spot a problem, my goal is to try to find a solution for it right then. If there's something I notice about the way the shop is working, that needs to be fixed. Either we're, uh, we're low on bins or I keep hunting for a certain tool or I find myself walking around a lot for some reason. If there's anything I notice in the shop that's a problem that I want to get rid of, uh, I work on trying to find a solution for it right away because all of us have experienced having something in the shop that doesn't work well and delaying fixing it and slogging through it for hours or days or weeks or months. And every time we do that job, we go, oh, man, this is terrible. I should fix this. But we always convince ourselves that taking the time right now to fix it isn't worth it. And so we throw away hours and hours and hours of wasted time on a broken process rather than spending a few hours up front solving it and then gaining the benefit of not having that problem anymore and saving that time and energy and stress. Stress is a huge thing that I'm working on eliminating in my business. For me right now, the major stress area is how I track all my work because web orders are very easy to track. They come in, it auto generates a shipping label, I get email notification, I have a pick list. That's very straightforward. All my custom mold work and tracking who needs which revisions and what the feedback is on the latest revisions and you know, and managing the workflow of who I need to order material in for and which molds are getting cut next and organizing time on, on my mill is more difficult. And that can be a source of significant stress. Um, if you're here watching the feed and you want to be in on the giveaway, I'm giving away a Morpheus solo tray at the end of the feed tonight. If you'd like to be entered in, please share the feed. Now that it seems that the video is working somewhat smoothly, and not chopping up and crashing a bunch, I would appreciate it if you would 
share the feed. Um, and so uh, two other kinds of waste, extra processing, doing unnecessary steps, or doing steps that have to be repeated again later. Um, anytime you can cut whole steps out of the process, that is ideal. And then the last one, which I thought was most interesting, it was one I hadn't really thought about before, non-utilized or underutilized talent. And this is anytime you're not taking full advantage of the people and their creativity, their problem solving ability, their gifts in your business, underutilizing people's talent, skill, and knowledge. And that is a complete switch from the way that I had been thinking about my business. I was very tool and machine centric, which meant I was thinking about how to keep my CNC machines and my vacuum formers busy for as long as possible. I wanted to keep the machines running. I wanted spindles turning. I wanted heaters running. I wanted parts forming. I wanted to keep the machines busy. That's not a bad goal. And when you have machines, if they're not running, they aren't making you money. A CNC doesn't do anything for me if it's sitting. Hello, Tony. Hello, Chris Hoagland. Thanks for the share. Hey, Tony, I'm giving away one of these cool machine cigar trays. So if you want in on that, share the feed. Um, but it's not enough to keep the machines busy for the sake of keeping them busy if I'm not using the people, myself and my employee Eric, to think creatively about problem solving in the business and not only doing the work we have currently, but finding ways to do the next work and future work better. And so uh, in the morning when we're warming up the machines, turning the CNC on, getting its spindle warmed up, uh, Eric and I walk around the shop and try to find a couple of lean improvements to make right there first thing in the morning. And we'll talk about the work we did the previous day. We'll talk about the work that's on the schedule for that day. And then try to find some way before the day really gets rolling to make a few changes that are going to improve the whole rest of the day and the work we have to do that day. Hello, Matt Booth. John made a comment about opportunity cost. Let me scroll back and catch that. Oh, it's not scrolling. There's opportunity waste. You just mentioned things like not finding listings, not appealing to customers. I just went through a website revision and did some new product photos and realized uh, it's not showing me your whole comment. Um, but if you, if you waste time in your process and the process chews up all your available time so that you can't keep your website updated, so that you keep postponing uh, paperwork and bills and invoicing and other nuts and bolts stuff that has to happen for the business to stay healthy and functioning, if you keep putting that off because your production process chew, consumes and chews up all your time and is running inefficiently and so you're just throwing hours into it, throwing hours into it, um, that's a recipe for a great deal of stress. That's a recipe for uh, missed tax payments, sudden cash flow problems, uh, late nights working till 6 a.m. because you are about to run out of money and you've got to ship more product. Um, that's a recipe for being tempted to do anything you can do to make a quick buck and losing your integrity and your principles. John said he realized how many sales he may have left on the table due to poor presentation or lack of traffic. Yeah, my website needs to be redone. I've done some work on it recently. I just started using the sales function. I got rid of a bunch of products that had kind of, kind of languished and I wasn't currently keeping an in inventory. Uh, and that has already helped. It's made my website easier to navigate. But uh, my website could certainly be better. And I'm going to work on this summer getting it seriously cleaned up and streamlined. Um, in my own shop, things like how I process stock, when I process stock for the CNC or for the vacuum formers, how much we pre-cut at a time. Like it's, it's tempting to say, okay, this is the size we're gonna use. Go ahead and cut up the entire order's worth. Like I just chewed through 80 two by fours in the past couple days, making a big, uh, big batch of outside the waistband light bearing rigs, OEM stuff. Well, we could have cut up all the plastic all at once but instead, we cut up a handful of sheets and worked those holsters all the way through to the end of the process to make sure that there weren't any reasons why we would need to change the mold size or change the plastic size or change how we were pressing them, change the orientation of the pairs, anything like that. Because what I really didn't want to do 
was cut up an entire order's worth of plastic and then find out that actually I need to recut it, I need to change the size, it's not going to work. And if I had done that, if I went ahead of myself, if I tried to do too much work before I had all the information I needed, I'm asking for defects. Okay? Um, I've gotten bit by this many times where I will make a new mold, I'll make a holster, I'll wear it for a day and think, oh yeah, this is great, everything is good, and then I'll go ahead and make 10 or 15. And then as I'm wearing that one first one for another week or two, I'll, I'll notice one or two things that I really want to change and I'll sit there and go, ah, is it major enough that I really want to pitch those dozen that I already made? Or can I like, you know, can I let those ones ride? Um, I just got motivated to work on my shop flow while I listen. Josh Levesque, that's what I like to hear, work on that shop flow. Um, another one would be like I, when I'm setting up new CNC trim paths and new CNC trim fixtures. Um, I recently threw away a handful of holsters because I made a, a mistake programming my trim path. And what I should have done was uh, the forming mold was fine. I'd already done hand cut shells and they turned out well. I should have formed 15 shells, CNC cut one, done all the edge polishing, folded it up, assembled it, put all the hardware on, and worn it around, I would have noticed the problem with the CNC cut if I had done that. Instead, I went ahead and CNC cut all of them, and then as I was folding them up, I'm like, wait a second, these two parts aren't lining up the way they're supposed to. And I went back and looked at the trim fixture, and sure enough, saw the spot where I had misprogrammed, and the CNC had cut into the fixture and cut into the shell. I just hadn't seen it. And so those were scrap. So the material was wasted, the forming time was wasted, the machine time to trim them was wasted, the time to fold them was wasted, all that labor just thrown away, starting over. And so um, this has also happened to me when I've been working on custom molds. Uh, there was one particularly bitter example where I had um, a mold client who gotten several test molds. And I was anxious to move through the next revision and get on to another project. So I was getting ahead of myself and was trying to cut the next revision before the client had really nailed down all their feedback on it. And what happened was I spent an entire morning in the early part of an afternoon machining a whole new set of molds and checking them and cleaning them up and prepping them for shipping. Only to find out later that afternoon that when the client called me back that there actually was one design feature change they had decided that they didn't want anymore and they wanted to revise it out. And so all the molds that I had made were all scrap. I'd wasted half a day of machine time and programming time and prep time to get them. I mean, they, they were packed. They were in boxes ready to ship, ready to put labels on. Um, and that happened because I tried to rush. It's just like USPSA or IDPA. Okay? If you drop a shot, the solution is not to try to shoot the rest of the string faster because what will happen is you'll throw more C's and more misses because as you rush, you'll go outside that zone in which you can do good work and one mistake leads to a second mistake so you rush more which compounds and in the end the wheels just come off and the whole thing is just a mess. So I've been having to work on waiting and making sure I take a little extra time to double check and confirm with the client every time before I cut a new revision to make sure that every change is crystal clear. Hello, Patrick Rorman. I'm giving away a Morpheus solo tray at the end of the feed tonight. <coughs> if you would like to be entered in, please share the feed. Uh, and so a few other things I've changed about lean. I went out and bought a whole bunch of bins, three different sizes, shallow bins, deep bins, and big wide bins so that I can easily and effectively carry different sizes of parts around the shop and have a rotating set of bins so that any time I'm working through a process, I might be pre-cutting after forming, I might be drilling and prep for CNC, whatever it is I'm doing, that I always have bins for the parts and bins of a matching size for the correct number of parts that are empty to put the parts in. So I'm not ever trying to, like one of the stupidest things is, when you have parts in a bin and you're trying to pull parts, use them, or do a step on them, and put them back into the same bin. You might have a divider, you might change the orientation. That's always stupid. It never works well for me. Um, and so I went out and bought a whole bunch of bins 
so that no matter what size and shape of kydex I'm working with, I have bins that will be a reasonable size to hold a quantity of those parts. And then I can just move those bins around the shop. I've got a rolling cart that can hold you know, eight bins on it. And between myself and Eric, we can move all the stuff around um, quickly and effectively without having to like juggle stuff in our hands. Just all goes in a bin. Uh, Eric is even better than I am about binning things consistently. I tend to sort of like just hustle stuff around the shop. And he always, before he starts a step, at the drill press, at the bandsaw, at the buffer, wherever he's working, he always clearly plans an in-feed bin, an out-feed bin, and then places them so that whatever he's doing, the workflow comes out right so that he just drops into the outfeed bin and grabs the next part. Um, I'm pretty good about this at the CNC. I've got uh, two little stools that I keep on either side of the door. So I've got a feed in table and a feed out table um, and bins to drop my parts in um, because um, it really adds up. Last week I was doing a whole bunch of drilling and had to do a bunch of spring clamps. I was holding these flexible parts in the CNC to prep some holes. And uh, I did like 700 cycles. And the next day, my hands were killing me from all those spring clamps. Um, I sometimes use priority mailboxes. Um, I like copy paper boxes lids. I use a lot of those. Those are a nice shallow tray and they're consumable. They get torn up, you just pitch them. Hello, Brent Hickman. Thank you for sharing the feed, Haven Defense. Um, if you've recently joined, I'm giving away a Morpheus solo tray tonight at the end of the feed. If you'd like to be entered in for it, share the feed. So does Manette. Oh, man. You had to bring up Holster, man. Well, you know. He's got his thing, and I guess it works for him. So a few other lean implementation things I did in the shop. I mentioned earlier that I built a tape tree. Uh, we installed the sheet metal shear in my shop right by the front door. So whenever we bring in sheets of material, whenever we bring in sheets of Kydex, we just lay them right inside the garage door when they first come in. We stack them there, and then we can pre-cut them down to the sizes we need and then put them on the cart and take them to the forming area of the shop. And we have a little shelf system with our different standard pre-cut sizes, and Eric racks them up. They're right there in easy reach from the Swift Press former, and so he doesn't have to go wandering around the shop to find stuff. John said he bought more bins at Lowe's every time he went. So speaking of new stuff coming, John and I worked on some pretty cool... Um, revisions to his classic holster and also a neat new piece of hardware which will be coming out in the next few weeks. Uh, I can't show it to you. I have production parts in my shop but I can't show them to you yet. John's orders. And um, I'm going to be using it on some of my holsters and uh, I think it's going to be available uh, for purchase to other holster makers and I hope you guys will like it and use it. So keep an eye on John's page. Um, for an announcement about that new cool piece of hardware. Better late than never. Should be June 7th is the drop for that new cool thing, says John. Uh, I moved my shipping label printer right over by my CAD computer and built a little station for my laptop with power and a uh, longer USB cable to connect to the label printer so that I have both my computers and my label printer all networked into a little hub and so I can process emails, I can open up any documents or files I have, I can update my website, I can see web orders, and I can be working on CAD. I have my CAD computer connected with Ethernet to my mill, and so I can be working on both those things at the same time and be printing labels and not have to walk anywhere to do that. That's been huge for me. Um, we moved the shipping scale. This was totally stupid. Uh, my shipping weight scale was just sort of on a shelf. I didn't use it every day, and so I didn't put it on a countertop. I just like kept it on a shelf and pulled it out whenever I needed it. But since I wasn't doing the shipping anymore, and Eric has a shipping counter now with overhead bubble wrap and uh, packing material stored under the counter so he can just reach underneath and grab bubble wrap or packing paper and different things, um, we moved the shipping scale right there at the corner of that counter. So anytime he finishes packing a box, he just slides it out of the end, sets it on the scale, and he can call the weight out to me across the shop. I can, without getting up, enter it in, finish the order, print the label. Hello, Sean Parsons. Um, and so those little things, while not major, I also built a, a little rack here for my uh, strip heater. It's just hanging out here on a little shelf built out of Jorgensen clamps. 
on the side of my side automation vacuum floor because I used to have to move the strip heater onto this table anytime I wanted to use it because it's 52 inches long. So I couldn't turn it sideways on any of my 4x8s and I couldn't leave it sitting in the middle of a table running lengthwise. So I would always stash it and then get it out when I had shells to fold, which was totally stupid. It was wasting my time. It was, it was, just, a, it was just waste. And so the 10 minutes it took to look around the shop and find a quick solution for that, I didn't have to build anything. I just grabbed two clamps I wasn't using. I clamped them on the frame of this machine. I set the strip heater on it and set. We can just run power right to it, just plug it in, turn it on. And it stays right there. It's at a nice waist height for working. It never has to move anymore. And the added bonus is the clamps give me little hooks to hang my most popular folding drones and my clamps and anything else I need for that little process all right there, right by the strip heater. Late to my bad, says John. My next big change will be putting buffers in the wall so I'm not bending over working on them. Chris, that's a good one. Buffer height is a big deal. I recently put some 4x4 shims, 4x4 blocks, under my buffer to get it higher. Uh, Eric's a little bit taller than I have, and he was finding it was wearing on him to be bending over it. And so next week, you'll be looking for those clamps. No, Patrick, I have extras of those. Not going to be a problem. Um, and so for me, a lot of lean just comes down to actually seeing what I'm seeing in the shop. Is this waste? Is this a problem? Is this not working well? Is this eating up time? Like today, I was trimming a bunch of left-handed holster shells, which is unusual for me. I don't make a lot of lefty stuff. And so I didn't have any fixtures already made for it. And I'm like, okay, well, it's not a huge number. I'm not making hundreds of these. Is it worth the time to make multiple copies so I can do my usual quick change pallet system workflow when I'm drilling and trimming these? And at the end of the day, I decided, not the end of the day, the middle of the afternoon, I decided that no, it wasn't worth taking the machine time up uh, to make up extra copies of all the fixtures that I would rather just eat the downtime of changing parts out on one fixture because I wasn't making that many. Um, and the only reason I did that today was because it's an unusual holster that I'm probably not going to make again for a long time. It was a one-off custom OEM for a big batch. Uh, if it was anything remotely standard and I was doing a left-handed version of it, I absolutely would have set up extra copies of the fixtures because if it took me 30 minutes to make extra copies, and it would save me 20 minutes of wasted time with the machine waiting while I was changing over on the same fixture. Well, that 10 minute investment of time in order to have those extra copies later for any other time I ran that part would be totally worth it. Um, so that's a bit of how I think about lean. It's not gonna be an especially long feed tonight. I know I got started late and so I'm gonna close it up a little bit, uh, a little bit early. I started the feed pretty frustrated tonight with the internet and the way it was not working. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. I will hopefully do another feed Monday or Tuesday of next week. So stay tuned. My goal is really the goal is consistency. I want to pick two nights a week to do Facebook live feeds regularly. So it would be very helpful to me if tonight while you're here finishing up the feed, if you could post a comment and let me know which two evenings each week would be best for you to watch live feeds. Is there a consistent schedule that plays nice with your workflow, your schedule, so that you can more consistently watch these if I keep them on the same days? So please post up a comment. Let me know which evenings, which two evenings a week. Uh, Sunday evenings are out. I don't work in the shop on Sundays, but any of the remaining days are fair game. Let me know which days you'd like to see these feeds happening on. Also, I have been fighting my way through downloading all the footage from these live videos from Facebook and getting it ready to put up on YouTube. Uh, I did not realize how awful the backend video management was on Facebook till I tried to download anything. Thoughts on a status board? Um, Jay, interesting you should ask that. Um, because I do, so if I had a stable system, a, a stable uh, family of products like you do, or it seems to me to be a more stable family of products, Jay, um, a workflow board like you have would be phenomenal. Um, because I'm changing gears so often, I'm taking on new mold projects and designing new parts, and there's a lot of turnover in what's being produced. Um, I, I use a whiteboard. We have it up here. 
it fell off today. There was windy. It's right back there behind those boxes uh, that keeps track of what things are coming up in the next two days so that Eric and I know what we're working on and know what stock to prep and know which machines to turn on first thing in the morning. Um, but I don't have anything like that beautiful workflow board you have in your shop um, because I'm often starting two or three new things every week. And then things that are done might not come up again for six, eight, 10, 12 weeks. And so I would be spending so much time keeping that board current that I haven't gotten that far to design something like that. Ahmed says, Tuesdays and Fridays. Chris Johnson says, any day actually works for me. Uh, I saw that Nate Gallup joined. Nate, you're late. I'm about to sign off. But if you want a chance to win this machined Morpheus solo tray, share the feed. Even now, here at the very end, you can still sneak in a share and get in the drawing for that. Uh, thank you guys for coming and watching. I'm especially grateful that Jay Pearson stopped by. Jay, your work inspires me. Thank you for stopping in and checking out the live feed. Have a great Thursday night. It's been a long week. Yesterday felt like Monday, and today feels like Friday, and so I have no idea what day it is. So have a great Thursday night, guys. Thank you for stopping in. Take care.